So today we are having the uh, <coughs> empowerment for the Avalokiteshvara empowerment. Uh, so, yeah, so first of all, uh, before starting the empowerment, maybe a uh, you know, little bit of idea about why we have an empowerment. So, normally it's a uh, kind of a, uh, you know, in the Vajrayana uh, tradition, or you know, in the, uh, we have the empowerments. Uh, so, when I say Vajrayana, it means uh, the Buddha taught uh, the Dharma or manifested the Dharma in uh, basically the three, uh, you know, yanas or the uh, three uh, levels uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, benefit beings. So, what does benefit being mean? You know, benefit being means uh, all of us beings, no matter uh, what kind, uh, kind of beings, no matter from where, you know, uh, we all have one common. Uh, uh, wish or one common goal and that is to uh, achieve uh, happiness and uh, one common uh, thing and that is to uh, you know kind of uh, eradicate suffering so this is one common goal uh, so uh, so whatever we do uh, we do for this purpose uh, that is our only you know uh, main purpose uh, so uh, in order to achieve this then uh, beings are different uh, types, different level, different understanding. Uh, so uh, Buddha, according to that, uh, manifested the path. Dharma is the path to which we are uh, able to achieve this. Uh, so he manifested in uh, different uh, levels. We call them the different yanas, which is the Theravada, uh, Mahayana, and Vajrayana. Uh, so uh, in uh, uh, you know, so uh, so that way. Uh, then, uh, so, uh, so different level that way, and then in the, uh, in, in the uh, Theravada, then one uh, recognizes uh, that uh, and the, uh, in the uh, suffering, uh, you know, well, of course all uh, uh, first uh, recognizes uh, and uh, you know, sees the root cause of the sufferings, rather than just superficially trying to uh, you know, kind of uh, eradicate suffering uh, from the surface level. Uh, we go to the root of the uh, you know, cause of the sufferings, and uh, we find that it is the uh, ones uh, we say the mental afflictions, you know, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, the self grasping, uh, uh, which uh, create all the uh, ego, uh, you know, jealousy, etc., etc. So these are also known as the defilements of the mental afflictions. And so through this, then all the sufferings arise with this. And so, uh, so uh, uh, you know, wanting to eradicate this uh, 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 mental afflictions, and then uh, through various uh, means doing this. Uh, then in the Theravada level, so understanding this, then one wants to be free from uh, you know, uh, suffering. Of the, we call the suffering of you know, the ocean of samsara, you know, which means uh, the circle of birth and death. You know, so uh, as long as we are uh, in this circle, then uh, we also call this the samsara. Then we are never free from uh, suffering. You know, maybe temporarily, you know, somehow uh, uh, we achieve certain level of uh, happiness, and but that also is subject to change. You know, so it's uh, impermanence. So therefore, uh, not able to achieve a permanent. Uh, uh, solution of permanent uh, happiness in this, as long as we are in this circle, and so wanting to uh, overcome or wanting to liberate from this, and then one works with certain uh, methods such as uh, overcoming the. Uh, uh, so, so that way, then Theravada. Then, uh, so, uh, so through the method of Theravada practice, then one can overcome. Uh, one can. Uh, Physical, you know, physical aspects of practice is the main, you know, in the Theravada. 
Then in the Mahayana is the more mental, you know, truly mental. Uh, so uh, practice of the uh, bodhicitta, you know, which is the uh, uh, loving kindness, compassion. Uh, you know, so wanting to uh, benefit all beings, wanting to free all beings uh, to this state of perfect realization or liberation from all suffering. And so for this purpose, then uh, yourself wanting to attain enlightenment or wanting to recognize the ultimate truth. And so this is the Mahayana of the Vajrayana Dharma. So, uh, so that is, and then in the uh, Mahayana, then the main practice are the six parameters, as we say. Uh, and uh, now uh, the Vajrayana is, uh, you know, it even it goes even one step further uh, by, uh, you know, uh, we say uh, looking direct into the nature of one's own uh, mind. You know, so recognizing the nature of one's own mind, then uh, one is able to uh, uh, recognize the uh, limitless potential in oneself. Uh, we in the Vajrayana. Uh, you know, we say that uh, uh, all beings by nature is perfect. We are Buddha by nature. And so, uh, so we have this limitless potential in us. Uh, the uh, nature or the potential in us and the, you know, the nature, the potential in uh, Buddha Shakti Muni who attained enlightenment in Gautaya uh, is the same. And we have the equal uh, potential. Uh, we have the same nature, and there's no difference in us. Only difference is he uh, recognized that. And so, through that manifest, being able to uh, manifest. Whereas we uh, are yet to recognize this. Uh, uh, so, therefore, uh, we are you know, limited. You know, so, uh, so, through the practice of the uh, Vajrayana, uh, then we are able to gradually, you know, the, the, its methods, practices, uh, through which we can recognize this nature of our mind. And so that is uh, the practice of the Vajrayana. Now, now in order to do this then, uh, empowerment is uh, necessary. As the name suggests, empowerment. So empower means to basically uh, kind of, uh, uh, not English word, not me. <laughs> so, <laughs> empower is to empower. So basically, it's an uh, introdu uh, introduction to what it is, you know, how to do it, and uh, what are the necessary uh, you know, uh, things in order to do this practice, you know, this kind of practice. So that is, uh, uh, and making the condition right for the uh, such practices. You know, so that is important. Uh, so, <coughs> as a word, it is important to make the conditions uh, proper or right. You know, the container, uh, uh, you know, the container right in order to, uh, for example, let's say, uh, you know, in order to, uh, in order to, uh, contain the molten lava, you know, we cannot put it in a beautiful cup like this, you know, and it cannot hold it. You know, so we need to make the, uh, uh, you know, we have to create the right container to hold the molten lava, you know, which is, which is a cast iron, right? So, so then it can hold the molten lava. So in the same way, uh, you know, for the Vajra and the practice, then we have to create the right, uh, you know, the container or the condition uh, in order to be able to practice this uh, in a profound uh, practice. Uh, anything is like this. And even like, uh, uh, let's say, a very concentrated medicine. And so medicines are of all type. And so uh, if the medicine is not very strong, then one can take uh, you know, not so much effect. Uh, but also the uh, effect also is gradual, you know, gradual effect. But if we take a very strong concentrated medicine, then first we have to create the right <coughs> conditions to take the medicine. And if uh, we take it without understanding it well, and then it is, uh, you know, it is, uh, it has serious consequences. Uh, but if we are able to create the right condition for this uh, you know, concentrated medicine, and when we take it, the effects are immediate. You know, we can get an immediate effect of it. You know, but uh, it is necessary to have the right conditions to take that kind of medicine. In the same way, Vajrayana is also a very profound, uh, very uh, you know, concentrated practice. Uh, so in order to do this practice, then we need the right conditions. Uh, so, and through the empowerment, then we create this condition. Uh, you know, we, uh, so here, uh, first uh, we say, you know, this purification of oneself. Uh, then uh, through the purification of one's mind, body, speech. You know, so this way, then purification. And then through the purification, then it, after that, then it empowers 
went to uh, practice uh, in the particular uh, uh, meditation and uh, <coughs> on the particular uh, uh, deity, for example, today the Avalokiteshvara. You know, so it empowers one to uh, transformation of oneself into the uh, in, uh, into the uh, deity, uh, uh, and it uh, empowers <coughs> one to uh, meditate on the deity. And et cetera, et cetera. So now, when doing this, then is it something that we are doing as something that we are not? Are we trying to hypnotize ourselves? You know, are we trying to uh, create something uh, to uh, you know kind of uh, fool around with ourselves? You know? So it is not it is not that case. You know, it is not like that. Actually, as I said already, uh, the nature of ourselves, you know, the uh, the uh, quality of ourselves, the uh, ultimate nature of ourselves is uh, uh, you know uh, limitless potential. It is perfect. So that is our Lokeshwara. You know, so it is same as our Lokeshwara. You know, when we recognize our potential, it is our Lokeshwara. When we don't recognize it, we are who we are. You know, the big self, you know, I. You know, so, so that is who we are. Uh, so that is why we are so limited. You know, I is very limited. You know, because of this uh, strong grasping onto this I, then everything becomes you and I. You know, so there's so many you and there's only one I. You know, so we become uh, just a drop in the ocean. You know, so, uh, so that's how you know we uh, don't. Uh, we are not able to manifest this uh, limitless potential in us. So uh, through the empowerment, <coughs> then through the practice, then what we do is we transform ourselves into who we really are, you know, which is limitless. You know, we transform into this limitless potential that we have, and so which is the our Krishna. And so through this practice, then gradually, uh, you know, it empowers us. And when we do the meditation of the Avalokiteshvara, Krishna, transform ourselves into who we really are. At that moment, if you observe yourself, uh, you are totally uh, free of. Uh, uh, you know, limitations such as uh, ego, you know, limitations such as uh, anger, limitations such as uh, jealousy, you know, so uh, you, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, naturally transcend these uh, kind of limitations. Uh, so, uh, so through uh, such practice, such meditation, then gradually one, uh, one accustoms oneself to, uh, you know, uh, Freeing oneself from these limitations and gradually, gradually then uh, <coughs> manifest the full potential of oneself. And so that is why uh, we do uh, you know, such practices. Uh, so it is not something that we try to uh, you know, bring from outside there into ourselves, trying to you know, be something that we are not. And that is impossible. Uh, uh, so uh, it is the opposite actually. You know, it is actually we are self who we are, you know, limitless potential. The uh, perfect nature that we have, so we we, not, you know, we manifest that. You know, uh, so that is how uh, that is how it works. You know, so this is uh, so uh, so through the uh, practice that we are doing this, and uh, <coughs> uh, yeah. So that is a basic, uh, you know, a general uh, understanding of why uh, we do such practice and why we receive the empowerment. Uh, so these are the basic idea. No. Uh, and, uh, um, okay. so, um, so as I said now today we are receiving the empowerment of the our Lukushara. Uh, uh, so here and uh, now it says if one uh, you know kind of uh, there's a brief introduction to the uh, our Lukushara empowerment. Mm, so here it says the our Lukushara is the uh, you know the uh, manifestation of the uh, uh, loving kindness compassion. You know, the Buddha, uh, it is the uh, Buddha of loving kindness compassion. So here yeah, it says our uh, is the uh, It is the manifestation of all the enlightened Buddhas. Because uh, you know without loving kindness compassion, without bodhicitta, uh, it is uh, impossible to. Recognize this uh, limitless potential in oneself, uh, which means in order to attain enlightenment, uh, it is uh, you know uh, it is uh, impossible without having kindness, compassion, and bodhicitta. So therefore, all the enlightened uh, and all the Buddhas attain enlightenment uh, because of this quality in them. You know, the bodhicitta. Uh, bodhicitta is the you know the uh, 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 thought of or you know. Or wanting to, uh, 
Not, not, there are two types of bodhicitta. One is uh, aspiration, one is uh, practical bodhicitta. So aspiration is first through the thought of wanting to benefit beings, uh, to uh, you know, liberate them uh, from the uh, you know, all kind of suffering to the perfect realization. And so one wants, you know, one uh, tries to attain the enlightenment, or you know, one wants to attain enlightenment for this purpose. And so that is uh, aspiration bodhicitta. And then through the practice, you know, through doing the practice, through uh, acts of you know uh, whatever necessary, uh, then uh, uh, you know, benefiting beings, and that is the uh, you know action bodhicitta. So these two kind of bodhicitta. Uh, so uh, here, so all Buddhas through this kind of bodhicitta uh, then uh, attain the uh, perfect realization. So therefore, uh, uh, and therefore, uh, then it says all the uh, Buddhas are the uh, you know the uh, Avalokiteshvara is the manifestation of all the Buddhas put together. And so that is why it says here. Yeah. So uh, so because the Avalokiteshvara is the manifestation of this. Uh, loving kindness, compassion, bodhicitta, and so that is why, you know, without that, then none of the uh, Buddhas uh, could ever attain enlightenment. And so that is why uh, here it says, Nagoda uh, is the uh, manifestation of all the Buddhas put together. Uh, and then here it says, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, Guru Padma uh, who was one of the, uh, you know, the uh, he was a great uh, master uh, who attained a realization, complete realization, uh, uh, and uh, he was the one to take the uh, Dharma, the Buddha Dharma, uh, to Tibet from India. You know? So uh, he's also known as the Second Buddha. You know? So uh, he has prophesied, or he he mentions uh, that uh, in the uh, in the uh, uh, land of snow cap, which is Tibet, and uh, then. Uh, our look at the Shora is the uh, you know Thakal means uh, you know karmic uh, you know the uh, deity of the uh, Tibetans. Uh, so you know it doesn't mean it is only for the Tibetans. You know uh, what it means is uh, you know so uh, because the Buddha Dharma manifests in Tibet, uh, so the lineage that is preserved in Tibet and you know, uh, the lineage that uh, will you know, continue uh, through that, uh, then uh, for those then our look at the uh, you know, is a very uh, uh, important uh, deity you know, because, uh, because uh, through our Lokeshwara the uh, Dharma will manifest greatly to benefit beings. And so that is how it is, uh, uh, that is how it is connected. And so it means that. Uh, it is very true you know, because uh, uh, you will find that uh, no matter uh, what, you know, uh, from which part or from what age uh, or what kind of, uh, you know, uh, Tibetan, you see, uh, there is not even a single Tibetan who will not know Amalia Pena. You know, this, uh, it is an in, inborn, an inbuilt thing, you know. So uh, it is the power of its, uh, you know, this uh, blessing. And so, and uh, the quality is such, you say, that uh, you know, people normally have lots of ego. You know, so uh, uh, and uh, if not careful, people who uh, say they are, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, kind of practitioners, uh, and if not careful, they have the biggest ego, you know, <laughs> uh, because uh, they learn a lot of things, uh, they act differently, uh, you know, the, and uh, those who learn a lot of philosophy, uh, you know, it talks about mind, it talks, you know, you become a very good talker, <laughs> and then no matter who says what, you can tackle them with uh, uh, some kind of uh, words, so that way they become very good at this, you know, and then uh, if not careful, if the motivation is not right, then, you know, you develop uh, ego, you know, you develop lots of ego. Uh, so, uh, so that way, yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it is said that somebody who knows Omani Pemeh uh, will never have this ego. And you know, nobody thinks I know Omani Pemeh You know, I am great. Nobody thinks this. It is a very, is a very common thing. You know? Nobody expects uh, anything from somebody knowing Omani Pemeh you know, So that way, uh, someone is free of ego. And, uh, and nobody forgets on Manipur, you know. You know? Uh, by the time you leave this room, I'm sure you will know on you know? and then you will not forget. There's no difficulty of remembering on Manipur, you know, also. You know, so that way, uh, you know, so these, it says, you know, that uh, there's so much blessing that these qualities are there. You know, so, uh, and I've seen, you know, that I've seen uh, some people might say, you know, it is important uh, to know the, uh, 
meaning, you know, without knowing the meaning, it is uh, uh, useless, you know. So, uh, to a certain extent, yes, you know, it is important to know, understand what it is. Uh, but why we understand is so that we can practice it, you know, so we can, uh, we can uh, receive this uh, 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 practice into ourselves and through that uh, manifest. Uh, so, for that purpose, then this uh, in intellectual uh, practice is important. Uh, but if not careful, then that intellectual practice, if not done with the right motivation, becomes what I already told you. you know, so, but I, but I know, uh, you know, uh, but I know uh, very, uh, you know, old, uh, simple people, Tibetans, uh, who don't know, you know, who are not educated in terms of uh, uh, literacy. You know, so uh, uh, they have no chance of, uh, you know, uh, studying so much. Uh, but uh, uh, so in that terms, they are zero. But uh, they have true devotion, true confidence in uh, Buddha, and they have you know, true confidence in the Avalokiteshvara, and uh, they only know Omani Pemehan. And then through this uh, practice of Omani Pemehan throughout their life, with that kind of confidence, uh, when they die, you know, I, because I've been to many places, you know, where people uh, die, where people are you know, this kind of thing. So I've seen, you know, through my own experience, that such people, though they might not be intellectually very, uh, you know, kind of uh, that way, uh, but because of this kind of quality, uh, just with saying Om Mani Padme Hum, they die in a meditative state. You know, they uh, they can uh, at that moment, you know, because we say uh, when one after one dies, and then the energy, you know, the uh, in the father and mother, you know, the energy uh, that uh, dissolves into the heart chakra. And when that dissolves into the heart chakra, then at that moment, the very uh, pure, raw state of one's uh, you know, mind, uh, the you know, pure nature of mind, you know, manifests at that moment. And so if one is able to recognize that, then one is able to you know, uh, uh, attain liberation through that. And so. Uh, so then the signs of one remains in a meditative posture, you know, even after your body is, you know, physical, everything is dead, uh, but uh, that way you still maintain the meditative state in our lives. And so, uh, so and I've seen you know, people with such, uh, then are able to do this, you know, able to uh, recognize uh, that way. Uh, and I've also seen people who are literally very advanced, you know, but uh, no practice and uh, die in the most common way. You know, and, that is for anybody, you know, so, uh, uh, and in fact, when they are alive, create lots of confusion. You know, so, uh, so that way, uh, you know, so that way, uh, uh, it is important. You know, it is important, and it has great uh, uh, blessings in that terms. Uh, you know, so, um, so here, yeah, so that is why it says, you know, uh, that uh, our Kishwara is a. Uh, um, so uh, anybody who is uh, associated with uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the lineage that uh, is preserved and uh, uh, you know, pass on uh, into that, uh, then uh, the Buddha Dhamma, uh, then uh, one benefits greatly through the hour of Ishwara, especially you know, uh, one uh, benefits greatly. <coughs> then uh, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, and then here, yeah, of course, it says that if one is able to practice that, then one will be able to purify one's, uh, you know, uh, uh, one's obscurations or uh, one's uh, uh, negative uh, karma uh, accumulated through one's. Uh, uh, body, speech, and mind. You know, so whatever we do, uh, we do through these three you know, doors we see. Either it is through our physical action, uh, or our you know, vocal you know, speech, or through the mental you know, uh, thought that we create uh, you know, various actions, you know, these three kind of actions. And, uh, and through these, if it's uh, positive, then uh, you know, the result is positive. If it's negative, then the result is negative. So, uh, so that way, you then create various karma, you know, negative karma, positive karma, neutral karma. So uh, it purifies those negative karmas here, uh, and uh, and then it blesses the positive karma, and uh, you know, one accumulates uh, you know, great merit. Uh, uh, it says, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then uh, it says uh, then it will uh, 
uh, you know, it will uh, bless one to uh, recognize, as I said, uh, the, uh, you know, the primordial nature of oneself. Uh, and uh, also, uh, one will be born in the, uh, the uh, land of the great bliss. They watch in the, in the pure land of the great bliss. Uh, so, uh, so that is what I already explained just now. Mm. Uh, <coughs> uh, and then it will, uh, you know, protect one from various kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, natural disasters. Uh, uh, then uh, from, uh, you know, uh, 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 sicknesses, uh, and then uh, develops one's uh, uh, you know, wealth. So wealth here again is very important to understand. Uh, you know, uh, wealth can mean so many things. You know, material wealth, of course, you know, it's to a certain extent it is uh, material wealth. Uh, but uh, uh, the most important wealth is the wealth of wisdom. You know, uh, uh, if one has the greatest uh, material wealth, uh, but if one is not able to, uh, you know, uh, have contentment, uh, then uh, no matter how much you have, you still want more and more. And that way you are the poorest person you know, because you are never satisfied with what you have. You, know, you always have suffering because you want more and more. You know, so that way, uh, without wisdom, then that happens. You know. So, and some have been unable to benefit others, unable to make use yourself. And uh, you know, so that way, wealth doesn't make difference in that sense. Uh, but uh, some people may not have so much, but very content people. You know, what they have, they utilize in the best way you know, of benefiting others. Uh, of uh, you know uh, making the best use themselves and having contentment with what they have, and it is said that such people are the richest people. You know, because uh, though they might not have uh, you know uh, physical wealth much, but uh, mentally they are rich. You know, so uh, so that is the most important. You know, so uh, so in that terms, then uh, wisdom is uh, the greatest wealth. You know, so so that kind of wealth. You know. Uh, so material wealth also, and then most importantly, the wisdom, you know, the wealth of wisdom, and so uh, it, uh, uh, it uh, you know, kind of one is able to uh, achieve that kind of uh, uh, wealth, uh, then good health, uh, etc. And so, uh, <coughs> so then, uh, so of course, he mentions a lot of uh, you know, kind of uh, many things, uh, but uh, mainly the most important things are these that. Uh, 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 I thought it was good to mention to all of you. Mm. Uh, mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. So yeah, okay. So uh, so with that kind, then uh, uh, so uh, with this, then now you re uh, realize that uh, the most important is uh, uh, the loving kindness, compassion. You know that kind of. Uh, 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 in the bodhicitta is very important you know, for your practice, um, for especially for the vajrayana practice uh, to be successful and for yourself to recognize this limitless potential. Because we want to, uh, you know, uh, manifest or we want to recognize this limitless potential. So when it's limitless, the uh, goal, when the goal is limitless, the method also should be limitless. You know, with a limited method, how can you achieve a limitless goal? You know, uh, so uh, so that is uh, why it's very important to have this limitless uh, motivation and to benefit limitless beings. You know, so when it is the motivation is to benefit limitless beings, then the uh, you know the uh, uh, result also can be the limitless potential that one can recognize. And but if the uh, motivation is just yourself or just your family only, you know, it is a limited uh, motivation, and the result cannot be uh, limitless. You know, of course, you can achieve a, a limited goal. You know, uh, it is not uh, bad, you know, uh, uh, but uh, it is not. One cannot achieve uh, enlightenment from such. You know, one can achieve to a certain level. You know, so that way, very important to have a limitless goal, uh, limitless uh, motivation. That is the bodhicitta. You know, so trying to develop that, trying to develop the, uh, you know, motivation to benefit all beings, you know, all beings, uh, and. Uh, uh, through the uh, you know, practice of the Aul of so, uh, so you want to receive this empowerment of the Aul of So uh, try to uh, develop this kind of uh, motivation, try to develop this kind of, uh, generate this kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 this kind of uh, uh, circumstance right now. And so you try to meditate on this.